it sounds like everyone's really getting a lot out of this session. Um, so I'll, we'll start um, with the introduction, um, as I said, of Camilla Hurtado. And she's worked as a psychologist, um, a family therapist, executive coach. She works in leadership development. And she's worked in lots of different cities in Europe. She's originally from Colombia, so she's got experiences of working in lots of different cultures as well. So I'm really looking forward to this session, Camilla. Um, welcome. Thanks a lot for joining us. Oh, I think you're on mute. Uh, just uh, yeah. Okay. Can great. You great. Okay. Great. Thanks very much, Daniel, for the introduction. And thanks very much, every one of you, for being here and for sharing how this last third day has been for all of you. Um, I was just listening to the last presentation, and it is just so inspiring to you know, to reflect on, on uh, what it is to, to lead uh, with heartfulness. And uh, um, the last thing that I got from that uh, presentation that really stayed with me is heartful leadership really starts with me, right? And it starts with you, with each one of you. And I am hoping that um, through the presentation that we are about to embark on, which is gonna be about 40 minutes, you're gonna have the opportunity to look back at all the things that you've learned throughout these three days, every single moment that has inspired you and ignited your curiosity so that you start becoming a bit more concrete in terms of what is it that you want to take out of this amazing investment of time and effort and energy that you've put into your own personal development since Friday. So I'm going to take you through a journey that is going to share, um, to do two things. So first I'm going to share a few very, very simple models or ideas of how we human beings work. Uh, I'm a psychologist, I, I love uh, talking about that. And also I'm going to, to give you a, a lot of questions that you might not be, I, be able to answer right away, but they should, that you should take with you for the reflection after this day so that you become more concrete in terms of the actions that you want to take. So let me um, share my screen and then we can start. Um, hold on a second, let me just go back to the beginning. Okay. So here we are. All right. So one of the quotes that I really like, it's a, it's a little short quote from a long sentence, uh, but the bit that I really like about it uh, is from Ralph Waldo Emerson and it says, the step from knowing to doing is rarely taken. And I'd like us to take a moment to reflect that because after three days of being inspired and getting a lot of ideas and, and uh, uh, you know, insights of what we could start doing, how we could start doing things differently, we very often believe that knowing and understanding is enough for having learned something. But actually, it's only the moment that you take action that makes a difference. So it's only the moment that you move from knowing, from understanding, to doing, to actually behaving differently, to actually integrating new habits into the way you, know, you live your life. That is the moment where learning really takes place. So I'm hoping that this session that we're going to get through together will help you to move from knowing to doing so that you really take action. So perhaps you're familiar with this idea of um, the competence model um, uh, suggested firstly by, by Stephen Covey. I want to, I like to learn it a learning curve, uh, to name it a learning curve. And uh, this is a curve that we all go through whenever we learn something new. And um, it, uh, I think it's useful to just remind ourselves of what the process of learning is about, how we start, where we start, the, the moments and the different phases that we go through, and how can we go through those phases, what is helpful going through those phases. So we start uh, being unconscious, incompetent, so we don't know what we don't know. And then Something happens and we become conscious, become aware of our incompetence. So, so all of a sudden, we didn't know, you know, we lived in the bliss of ignorance and now we know that we are incompetent and we want to get out of there. 
So we start doing something to become more competent until it becomes, we become so good at it that it is just a, a habit. So let me just explain this with, a, with, a, with an example that most of us can connect with. So say you want to learn how to drive or how to ride a bike, but let's just stick with the riding, with the, with the driving a car. Uh, before you ever learn, decided to learn how to drive a car, you, you, you've sat in a car a hundred times before and you didn't even wonder how that worked or what was necessary for you to be able to drive it, right? It wasn't relevant, it wasn't important, you didn't know uh, the, the mechanics about driving, so you were unconsciously incompetent. You didn't know how to drive, but you didn't know anything about it. It was fine, it didn't disturb you at all, right? However, you decide that you want to drive because now you get a job that is far away from where you live and you there's no uh, real good connection in public transportation. So the best way to get to your job and do your commuting in a decent time is to drive. So you decide you want to drive. And all of a sudden you go to a driving uh, school and start learning all the theory about driving and all the practice. You take a lot of practice lessons and all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, this is really complicated, right? So you sit in the car and you learn all the things that you, all the step, steps that you need to learn to do be, to be able to drive your car. And it, you know, it sort of hits you how incompetent you are, right? So you become aware of this incompetence. And you want to get out of that. So you start practicing and, and, you know, driving and learning and driving and driving. And at the beginning, you know, the first time you want to start the car, it sort of feels very unnatural. And the first couple of times and all of a sudden it starts feeling better and easier. Uh, but you're still very much aware of how to start the car and what to do first and how to, you know, press the gas and then brake and not press it too much. And if you still have gears, it's a lot of things going on at the same time. So it's a very conscious process, right? But the more you do it and do it and do it, the more it becomes part of a habit, right? So you don't really realize anymore all the steps that you need to take to be able to drive your car. Until all of a sudden, you are competent, you're a competent driver. And you do that so competently that it is an unconscious, an unconscious skill that you have. It's autopilot. You just do it without noticing. You all of a sudden drive to work, get out of the car and think, oh, I don't even remember having driven, right? Because you were listening to music or talking on the phone or doing all kinds of other things besides driving. And we sort of forget where we started off, right? But that is a process that we go through every time we learn something. We don't know what we don't know. And then something happens. Perhaps we get kicked out of our comfort zone. Perhaps, uh, you know, like it has happened to all of us with this COVID um, um, pandemic. And then we realize, oh my God, I, I didn't know. I didn't know how to use Zoom. And now everyone is uh, meeting on Zoom, for example, or I didn't know whatever it is. And then you, we become conscious of our incompetence. And we want to get out of that, right? So we want to become competent at, some, competent at something. And we start practicing and practicing and practicing until we become unconsciously competent. So this is what, how we learn. Very simply described, this is how we become competent at something. So what I want you to do is to start thinking back to Friday, the first session that you attended, and some of you perhaps had the chance to listen to the session that I conducted on growth mindset. Um, so that, that's when one of you asked me about this uh, idea of self-sabotage. Why do we self-sabotage and how do we avoid that? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. How come we know that we should be doing something different and we still don't do it? So that's an interesting question. I would like you to go back to the first session that you attended throughout these three days and start remembering all the things that inspired you. So write all you know, I would like you to sort of start preparing your brain for action and write down all the things that throughout these three days inspired you and ignited your curiosity to learn, to try something out, to improve, to become better, to become better at something, to acquire a new skill. And I want you to write down whatever pops up. Everything counts. Everything is valid. 
and try to do that just focusing on whatever pops up without filtering it, without judging it, without edit editing. So if something comes to your mind that you've perhaps tried before and uh, you didn't do it um, and you're going to judge yourself already by, okay, let's not put it on the list. No, don't worry about it. You don't have to commit yet. Just write down whatever pops to your mind, all the things that have inspired you throughout these three days. I'm hoping that you took a lot of notes. If you haven't, this is the time. We are going to set goals for yourself or you are going to set goals for yourself. And research shows that if you write down your goals, you're much more likely to achieve them because you will commit to them because you are, um, you will have a point of reference to go back to whenever you, you, you don't remember anymore what you wanted to achieve. So write down your, write down your goals if you haven't started yet. If you did, if you took some notes, then have a look at your notes and write down whatever comes to your mind. It would be great if you can write it down on your on our Facebook feed or on our YouTube feed so that we start getting an idea of what are the things that you that inspired you the most and that um, you think might be something that you want to work with. And um, because we very often forget very quickly all the things that we wanted to take on, um, this is just a quick reminder of these three days. So you started the Pro, the, the three days being unconsciously incompetent for now, you had a, an idea of what the problem was going to be about, but you didn't know uh, how incompetent you were, right? Until you started to explore. And all of a sudden, you explored and you realized that there are things like uh, growth on a fixed mindset. You talked about how to figure out your blind spots. Um, obviously, you talked a lot about the heartfulness way. Uh, we explored some career paths. You've, we've talked with some artists. Um, and you know that there were a lot of sessions that perhaps led you to understand all the things that you didn't know you didn't know. So you became conscious incompetent. And uh, all of a sudden uh, you realize, well, there's a lot of things that I'd like to do. And then the second day comes and it's about embracing. It's about embracing that uh, conscious incompetence and also um, talking about uncertainties and how to live through those, how to become more resilient, how to do more of a nonviolent communication and a lot on team and leadership development and very important, how to be more self-compassionate with ourselves, self-compassionate. Um, so perhaps you started already thinking of things that you want to practice. Perhaps you have to, you want to include a meditation in your routine, in your daily routine, whatever it is that you started thinking of, those are the things that I'd like you to write down on a piece of paper. All of a sudden, uh, you got to the third day, which is all about evolving. So um, how do we go beyond our own self and think of our community? Who other people might we impact with our personal development? Um, how can we develop more personal, more positive behaviors? Um, what is it about entrepreneurship that is interesting? And obviously uh, this idea of heartful leadership that I find so inspiring and so touching. So what were the things throughout these three days that inspired you and sort of gave you the feeling, yes, that is something that I want to take on. And uh, having done this exercise, we're going to become very, very specific about setting goals and defining an action plan. So I'd like you to have a look at how we can set SMART goals. Perhaps this is something you've come across to before, um, but setting SMART goals and writing them down is going to increase the chance of you achieving these goals. So S start, stands for specific. Make it as concrete and specific as possible. Measurable is uh, obviously define a way that you can measure what you want to do. So if we talked about, for example, about physical fitness, right? If I wanted to um, start eating healthier then, or, or uh, going to the gym more, then make sure that you say to yourself something as specific as 
from this week, this coming week onwards, I'm going to go to the gym for an hour, three days a week. So by the end of next week, I will have to be, to be, to be able to measure whether that was what I did or not. Make it achievable. And that means make it as small as it is manageable for you and as big as it is inspiring and, and um, yeah, um, gives you sort of energy to work towards it. But don't make it too big that it's impossible, right? So if you want to uh, start getting more fit, uh, again, physically, don't um, decide that you want to run, run a marathon next month if you've never run before, because that is just not achievable. So make it, you know, pack it in, a small, in smaller steps. Make it relevant, and that is so, such an important point. Make sure that this goal is something that is really important to you and to you and your own purpose, your own reason to be in life, your own values, whatever you stand for. I had this question on Friday, uh, someone asked me, so what if we, are, if we want to behave differently, but we have you know, all of, uh, um, of our parents or, or society or the system around us expecting us to behave the way we have behaved so far. We, want, we don't want to do that anymore, but they sort of expect that from us. Well, um, this is the moment for you to define a goal that is relevant to you, not to the rest of the world, not to your parents, not to your boyfriend or your girlfriend, not to your boss, not to your colleagues, to yourself. This has to be related and aligned with your values and your purpose. And obviously make it time bound so that you really um, commit to a specific time and can review progress. So we are going to become more um, specific about our goals. How do you set a SMART goal? I'd like you to go back to the list of things that inspired and ignited your curiosity. So I hope that you have at least one, if not many things that inspired you throughout these three days. You might be tempted to take on 10 of those things. And I would advise you against doing that. Because if you do that, you cannot concentrate and you will most probably end up not knowing when to start and nothing is going to happen. So my encouragement would be for you to take one or two things maximum to start with and make sure that you take those one or two things all the way to the level of unconscious competence so that they become part of your habit and then you take another thing. So focus on a few things, make them part of your new positive behaviors and only then take a new goal for yourself. So how, how do we do this? Having a look at all of your, a, a, a lot of the things that inspired you, ask yourself first, where would you see the biggest gain? Where would you see the biggest benefit if you did what? One goal, one or maximum two things. Where would you see you and you know, your, your life see the biggest gain? And the second question is, where would you feel the biggest pain if you didn't change that? So perhaps you've known already a while that that's something that you want to work on but somehow you've managed not to take any action. Where would you feel the biggest pain if you didn't take that as an action? So I'm hoping that you are going to be able to choose one or two things, one for the gain, one for the pain, or at least one for each of them. And I'd like you to focus on the first one that you think is most relevant. Okay, and for that one, we're going to go through these three or four questions. And the idea is that you do the, same, do the same for the other topic. Now, I'm aware that we might be going quite quickly through these questions and you might not be able to set a SMART goal in a, cup, in a, manner, in a matter of uh, a minute or two. That's totally fine. But I want to take you through the questions so that you take a bit more time after we end the day today 
And I would advise you not to leave it until next weekend because then you will have forgotten a lot of the things that you really wanted to do. So make sure that you take some time at the end of the day today to make this as concrete as possible if you don't manage in the time that we have together. So now you have one thing that you want to focus on, the, the most important one for you. So write down what is it that you want to achieve regarding this topic that you've chosen and make it smart, make it specific, measurable, attainable, relevant. Why? Why do you want to achieve this goal? That's the relevant bit. Why? Your big why? And time bound. Okay. If you, again, if you cannot um, describe it very nicely and smartly yet, it doesn't matter, but just write it. What, what is it that you want to do? And I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to put that down on paper, because if you've never gone through the process of setting a SMART goal, it might not be that easy. And I'm happy to answer some questions by the end of the session if we still have some time. So say, for example, you say, um, again, I'm going to stay with the, with the physical fitness because that is something that we can all relate to. It's, it's sort of a simple example to, to share. So say, um, you know, I'm going to share one of my cells. So I just had a baby two months ago. So, um, and I feel uh, that I, you know, that I have some backache and uh, I haven't done any sports in the last uh, six months. And I feel that I should, uh, you know, start becoming fitter. So uh, my, my goal, uh, I could say something like, I want to start doing Pilates twice a week again, starting this week. And I'm going to do that for half an hour each because I know that an hour is a bit too difficult. So I'm going to do half hour to twice a week uh, of Pilates, which is what I used to do before. Now, the second question is, what is stopping you from doing that already? And that is a great question to ask yourself. If you ask yourself, how come I self-sabotage and I don't want to do that anymore? Well, what is stopping you from doing that already? What is stopping me from doing Pilates twice a week already? And when you ask this question, it's very easy to blame others. Oh, well, you know, um, my, my, my partner doesn't let me, or I have too much, I, you know, my, my boss gave me too, many, too much work, or um, it was raining so I couldn't go out jogging, whatever it is. We are very, we're experts in finding excuses for us not to take responsibility for what's good for us, interesting enough. So my advice when you answer that question is to make sure that you stay, and again, coming back to Stephen Covey, stay in your circle of influence. Stay in those things that you can actually influence and control. Not the weather, right? Because you cannot control that or influence at all. What is it that you can influence for sure? What is stopping you from doing that already? And to be honest, once you start asking yourself that question, you very often, if not always, realize that the only thing that is in your way from you achieving something is you. So the only thing that's stopping me from doing Pilates twice a week is laziness, is um, I haven't organized myself, I, don't, I haven't put it in a routine, whatever it is, it's myself, nobody else. So what is stopping you from doing that already, that thing that you want to do. Now, the third question goes back to my first presentation on growth mindset. Rather than focusing on the end result already, I'd like you to start thinking on how will you notice you're making progress? So how will you notice that you're slowly getting closer to your goal? Perhaps you haven't achieved it all, right? So if my goal is to uh, I don't know, lose uh, eight kilo that I, that I still have, have after my pregnancy. Um, perhaps I don't focus after a week whether I've lost eight kilos, right? So I start within a couple of weeks, I want to lose one kilo. So what is the progress that I am making towards my goal? And obviously, how will you know that you have achieved your goal? So how does this end result look like? So that you sort of have a very clear vision of what you're striving towards. Now, what I find very, very useful, and that again goes, uh, helps us against self-sabotaging, is if we 
manage to engage someone that will help us in our learning. So that was that's what the what the last question is about. Um, well, I, I can see that it's not it's not there in the in the in in that question yet. So it's going to be the last question. But how can you engage someone that will remind you that you wanted to uh, go out running twice a week, or how can you engage someone that is loving you and that uh, you trust? that is going to be able to challenge you and remind you that actually you wanted to wake up 20 minutes earlier every day to start meditation. So who can, can you engage that is going to be what I call an accountability partner? And that is really, really helpful for you to come, you know, make some progress quicker because you feel that you have someone who's uh, going to remind you to be committed to yourself. So what are the first one or two or three small steps that you want to take to achieve your goal. Again, make the, the steps very, very small, package them small so that you are then able to achieve this goal. Don't, want, don't decide to run a marathon in a week if you've never run before. Okay, so how do we know whether you're gonna do it or not? Well, it's important to see what motivates us to ask. And if we simplify human motivation, there are two things that take us to action, avoiding pain or seeking pleasure. Now, if I want to avoid pain, pain, that works really hard, right? So if I put my hand on a hot stove, I don't want to think, I don't have to think very long before I take it away very quickly because I want to avoid the pain. The only problem with acting to avoid the pain is that it only works in the short term. I cannot do something just to avoid the pain for a very long time. Now, the other thing that helps us move into action is to seek pleasure, to see the carrot at the end of the tunnel, right? To see the light at the end of the tunnel, to see, um, to have a, a, a clear picture of how it, it looks like and feels like to be fit again, to be, to have be eaten uh, healthy and have gone to the gym and whatever it is in a couple of weeks time. So that one takes a bit longer to work, but it lasts in the long run. So I'd like you to ask yourself, how do you, um, what, what, where is your motivation at the moment? And uh, is this goal that you want to take on for you to avoid pain? And if that's the case, I'm sure you're gonna take action quickly, but how can you turn it into something pleasurable in the future? And if this is a game that you see for yourself. Then how do you how do you make sure that you start getting into action as quickly as possible? And once you get there, I'm sure it's going to last in the long term. So the last question that I'd like, or the last exercise that I'd like you to do with your own goal is to ask yourself how committed are you to perform that goal? So. On a scale from one to 10, how confident are you that you will achieve it? Now, one means, you know, I know I should perhaps maybe try, which means you're not gonna do it, right? Maybe, perhaps, and try, you're not gonna even do it, Don't, it's one. And 10 will be nothing, nothing will stop me from doing it. So from tomorrow on, or from tonight on, I'm just gonna listen more carefully, or from, tonight on or tomorrow on, I'm going to lead my team differently. Whatever it is that you want to take on, nothing's going to stop you. And that is the 10. Where are you? How confident are you that you're going to achieve your goal? And if you're not there at 10 yet, perhaps you're at six or seven, what do you need to move one or two points up the scale? So what do you need to get your motivation going so that you feel more confident that you're going to achieve that goal? And again, once you have clarified that motivation bit, you can define, okay, what is the first step that you're going to take? And I want, to, want you to take a step that you can perform during 21 days, not for the rest of your life, because again, that sounds a bit sort of impossible. But 21 days has proven to be a good time for you to start to develop a new habit. So what can you start taking for 21 days, non-stop, so that you start to develop this new habit? 
And again, going back to my suggestion before, who can you engage in the process? Who could be your accountability partner that can take you throughout these 21 days so that you can achieve your goal? So that is um, the end for me. What we would like to know from you is what will be your first action step? And it would be great if you share it in our menti.com. Um, that is the, the, the code. And um, I can assure you the moment you start typing it and sharing it with this amazing, inspiring community, it will feel a bit more committed. So that's why we want you to share with us what is going to be your first action step. And for that, uh, Daniel, I'm going to probably stop sharing here, right? Yeah, exactly. And then we, um, our technical team can then uh, hopefully share. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm curious. It's hard. I know it's hard to, to commit to a first action step, but here we come. Some of you are daring to do that. Excellent. You know, taking an action step means leaving your comfort zone and that is hard work because we're wired to do what we're used to doing. So uh, our brain is going to stop us from leaving our comfort zone. It's scary to leave our comfort zone. So we need a lot of courage to do it. You need a plan. Yes. It's important to understand where you are now. Absolutely. That's the first step. Great. You need a plan and you need courage to take action. Again, it's not going to be easy. Your, your brain is going to make sure that you go back to your comfort zone, to all the things that you know, to all the things that you've been doing for so long and they have proven to be successful so far, sort of successful, right? Um, perhaps you're in a difficult uh, relationship and you've been there for a while and you know it's not working and uh, your comfort zone means that you know how it works so you don't dare to leave it right um, so it's going to be hard to leave that not working relationship whatever it is with your boss or with your partner or with your friends whatever it is it's going to be hard um, I love it I try to tolerate my physiological discomfort yes I love it there's a lot of discomfort involved in uh, learning something new do it three times a week. That's measurable. It's time bound. Excellent. Yes. Visualize a possible outcome. Yes, that is great. That is the, that is motivation through seeking pleasure. Excellent. Pause before disagreeing. Yeah. Listen, listen, and try to put yourself in the, in the, in the shoes of the other person. More empathy. Excellent. Oh, I love this. I love these guys. You are committed. I'm loving this. Get yourself out of old thought loops. Yes. And you know, your brain is going to bring you back to those. It's going to bring you back to those. So park them, write them down and tell your brain, I hear you. I'm just going to give myself the chance to think something different, to have a different self-talk. Excellent. Improve an existing skill. Excellent. So more practice, 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 practice makes the master. Yes, I love it. Get as many accountability partners as you want <laughs> because having a partner to take you uh, running with them is great or asking you, so how is it going, the meditation daily? How is it going? And you're like, oh, sorry, I haven't started yet. It, it, it really helps to have a an accountability partner. Yes. Excellent. Yes, resume contact with friends. That is so important. Focus on your relationships. Invest in your relationships. That is, and there's enough uh, research that shows that people who are happier have positive relationships. So if there's one thing that you want to, that you want to choose to invest your time and your energy in is in improving your relationships. Believing in myself. Yes, excellent. Perfect. All right, guys, so we come to the end of the session today. I thank you very, very much for sharing your actions. It is inspiring to see uh, what you're planning to do after these three days. And I wish you all the best and an amazing time after this. Daniel, over yeah. to you.
Thank you so much, Camilla. I really loved that session. Um, I was doing it myself and I've already got lots of things going on in my head that I'm going to do. And it's so Excellent. nice, I think, um, when you absorb so much to really have a clear plan, like, right, I'm going to do this now. And having your session has given us that space to really, I think, make the most out of all of the things we've received in the last few days. So it was perfect. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs>